This is Tuesday, August 4th, 2020, meeting of the Berlin Board of Health. As a preliminary matter, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Take care not to screen share your computer and the podcast may be captured by the recording. My name is Paul McKelk, Chair of the Board of Health. Uh, our members who are present are, and please say present when I call your name, Sue Rigera. Present. Bob Wheeler. Present. And we have Bill Brookings from the Schober Associated Boards of Health. Present. Okay. And uh, Leanne is our uh, coordinator, wing person, and miss everything tonight. <laughs> Present. <laughs> no pressure, Leanne. Okay. <laughs> we call this meeting to order at 7.02, probably, um, on August 4th, 2020. This open meeting of the Berlin Board of Health is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth, due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus, specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Berlin website at www.townofberlin.com. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public meetings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, provided reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of this meeting. While no in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. The standard public comment portion of this meeting will accommodate limited public comment. For this meeting, the Berlin Board of Health is convening, you, you, convening using the Zoom platform as posted on the agenda, identifying how the public may join. Excuse me. The public is encouraged to follow along during this meeting using the posted agenda, unless I know it otherwise. Supporting materials that are available this evening to members of the Board of Health can be made available to the public by request. Um, we're going to now turn to the first item on the agenda, but let me cover some ground rules. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda, and after they conclude their remarks, I will invite each member by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Hold on. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in conversation with each other, please do so through me, taking care to identify yourself. To the extent that our te technical capability allows, public comment will be permitted during the public comment section of this meeting as follows. Attendees' phones and other devices will be muted unless and until they raise their hand and are recognized by me to speak. I ask each member of the public who wishes to speak to identify their name and I will afford each speaker time to ask a question or make a brief comment. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. With that, we will move forward to uh, our agenda and begin. And, uh, and it looks like, Bill, you may be up first. 
Um, yeah, just an update. Uh, the vehicle complaint that we had um, issued an order on the 30 days has gone by and it does not appear that anything has changed. Um, the police chief has issued a, a similar order to the town's bylaw. So their 30 days, you know, started not long ago. So again, the board would need to decide at this point if they want to move forward, move, yeah, move forward legally um, or wait and see if the police um, order uh, stirs any action on site. To, to that point, um, I have a call into the Worcester Housing Court to get some clarifications. I've also been in contact with the Massachusetts Elder Services um, and Chief Galvin so that we have a communication network uh, regarding this particular situation. And as such, as, as Bill just summarized, um, at this point, where we don't have enough clarity to take any definitive action. Um, our, uh, our order of over a month ago stands and there's a new order from the police chief relative to the vehicle that um, has been sent. And we will see what transpires from that. Okay. okay. Uh, Next item, Bill, portable toilets. Yeah, again, um, I happened to be on River Road um, probably a month ago and noticed uh, portable toilets at the NRP site with a vendor that I was not familiar with. So I did call my office and verify that they were not uh, licensed septage haulers in Neshoba. So any portable toilet, because they're removing the contents and then traveling to their dump site, needs to be a licensed septage hauler. I did call the company and I called the site super and it was taken care of, I would say within a week or two. So th those, those portable toilets have become licensed, but I guess I put it on the agenda so that if you're in town and you see a portable toilet, could be at a residence, a business, a construction site, it, you know, let me know or call Neshoba and see if they're a licensed hauler. If not, we give them a call. Uh, we tell them they must be licensed and we give them maybe a week or so. And if that doesn't happen, we, we tell them to move the unit. So it's kind of an FYI, if you're out and about and see a portable toilet, make the call. Yeah, they're becoming more commonplace even on very small job sites. Yeah, yeah. and most guys know they need to be licensed, but sometimes they try to fly under the radar. But right. um, I've had uh, probably three issues in the last month and all have been quite cooperative once we make the initial contact. Uh, is well, there any major filing fee with Neshoba or anything? No, it's um, it's a simple application, $250, good for the year. Um, you supply us with a letter from where you dump, you know, a certain treatment plant that allows you to dump there. And then you're licensed to haul within the 16 towns that we cover. So it's a, it's not a bad business move either. Because again, we keep a list of licensed haulers. So if people call and ask, they're on the list. So by any chance, do you remember who handles the transfer station? United Services? United Services, and I'd really like to kind of switch over to Collie or someone a lot cheaper. Yeah, shop around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when we shop around, we'll just want to make sure we ask them uh, if they are licensed by Neshoba and that they would need to be. Right. Uh, Bob? Bobby, yes. Uh, uh, Billy, isn't it? Uh, Required to have a um, porta potty on a construction site in Berlin um, uh, if there's not there's a functioning no system. no local regulation. I mean, it's a good matter of you know good sure. business, but like sure. Bolton has an actual local regulation that requires it. Yeah. Um, I, guess I thought I thought did, build I thought building did have it. No. Well, that'd be building. You'd have to ask them, but you know. Okay. If they don't have one, the question would be where are employees, where are workers? You know. Right. Doing the business. So uh, yep. it makes sense. Yep. Uh, normally you do see them there. Um, but again, you know, if, if, if they're not licensed, they, they need to be. So that, that's just the point to take and home uh, on portable toilets. Mm -hmm. and, and this goes for like rec departments, soccer fields, baseball, you know, any, any town entity. Um, right. In fact, we had a construction site in Bolton that was road work with it, with a shutting a road down. And, and um, I noticed that the, um, uh, the portable toilet is someone that hadn't renewed with us and um, again made the call it was taken care of in a day so, yeah. uh, so well, well, a reminder. I, 
I noticed that CSX uh, down at the tracks, they had one yep. uh, down at South Street, apparently for their construction on the roads. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's the key is just verifying. You yep. let me know or you can call over and talk to Annette and she can pull it right up and see if they're licensed. If not, I make the call to the uh, number on the unit. Perfect. You said Annette at Neshoba? Yep. Or, or Jenny. Yep. Extension zero at that uh, main air number will get you the, uh, the front desk. Okay. Everybody got that in case you're out and about and see something? And certainly you, you don't need to go through channels. If you see something, call the show yeah. and uh, we'll go from there. Or, or, or just text or call me and I'll, yeah. I'll do a drive by. Yep. Okay. Horse complaint. Uh, that was a complaint received by, I think, multiple um, boards in town. <laughs> a woman that owns uh, property in town allowed uh, someone else to bring animals onto her property and, um, began to not maintain them in a healthy manner, um, felt that uh, the town should take action. And, um, you know, it really looked like that as the property owner, it would be her responsibility. Um, I think the animal inspector did go out there and verify the conditions weren't good. And the owner did send the uh, owner of the property, sent the owner of the horses a letter to remove the animals within 30 days. And if that doesn't happen, um, you know, MSPCA may become involved to remove the animals. Paul? Yes. I think we should get MSPCA. Uh, uh, she's been in this for how many years now, this woman? I think MSPCA should be notified and check the status of the horses and the, and the health. Uh, is that up to us, Billy, or up to the... Uh, well, I think the animal inspector may have already been in touch with MSPCA, so maybe they've given, given the owner a chance to get the animals out of there. But um, as far as I know, they have been contacted. Sue made yeah. sure the animal inspector was informed and it is in her hand. So that's already been handed off. Okay. How about the camp thing? What was that all about? Um, I, I did visit, um, coincidentally, it's the same site and um, they are on what's called Hip Camp, which is similar to like an Airbnb type uh, website, except for campsites. And uh, they are listed. Um, I did visit the owner in person, um, gave her a verbal cease and desist and uh, we'll be sending out a, a written cease and desist in the near future. Basically, if you're gonna be a campground, you need a license or a permit, and um, that, that wasn't something that was uh, currently issued for that site. Right. Yeah, that was, a, that was a new one on me. I had never heard of that before. Nope, learned something new every time. Yeah, that would bring it to wells, water, public, everything, right, Billy? Uh, again, if, whether or not it meets the definition of a campground in the campground regulations is the key. But I think once you accept money to allow someone to stay on your property, you're, you're meeting that definition. There you go. Um, okay, our hearing is at 7.30. Uh, do you have anything else, Bill? If not... Well, we, um, we can talk about the general mass complaint. Um, that's, that's kind of a topic that should be on, I think, each meeting. I, I have not received any mass complaints since last meeting. I don't know if you've had any, Paul, but it's no. been quiet in that respect. Uh, all, all's quiet uh, from my, uh, my interaction. Yeah. And, you know, unless the board has something, we can certainly jump down to Title V inspections. Just... Um, Okay, moving beyond that, well, although it relates, I went to the Rockwell's leasing office today. If I'd pay them a visit, be, and that was precipitated by a voicemail inquiry from one of their new residents about recycling and so forth. So I thought the best way to do it was go to the management office. And everybody I encountered around the management office and in the community building there was wearing a mask, which was, which was good to see. Um, things that don't relate to Neshoba is that Rockwell will be bringing online some re recycling compactors is what I was told come October, November. In the meantime, they offer nothing. 
Um, and that's what one of their new residents had inquired with the Board of Health. She actually had gone online, saw something relative to the transfer station, went to the transfer station, and was told that um, because she lives in an apartment which uh, the person she talked to was unaware of or didn't recognize, I told her that that was not possible. I did have a conversation with her today. Um, and she, was, she was very nice. She's uh, looking for, let's say, a temporary solution to recycling until Rockwell brings theirs online. Um, she has done a little research. She found out that Target does some. I told her to check with uh, um, Office Depot or Office Max, whatever it is, in Marlboro on Route 20. Um, and that brings to mind that um, there is a, I'm going to call it a lack of information between Rockwell management and their um, new tenants relative to how some of the fundamentals of trash and recycling work. And I dialed, peel back another layer or two of that. And I wonder whether as a board of health, we should uh, do some exploration to find out what local businesses offer recycling so that we can provide Rockwell with that information and they can pass it on to their tenants so as to avoid us getting involved. Short of that, we need to think about, and I believe I sent an email to both Bobby and Sue, uh, how we might want to address that, think about it, address it, um, you know, do we want to issue a new type of just a recycling sticker? Uh, because we know other uh, people in town, like uh, I can never remember the name of the development off of River Road, the Pulte development, the over 55. There's some people there that like to recycle. Um, and to minimize any confusion before between full use of the transfer station and recycling and possibly use of the take it or leave it when that comes back online. We want to, I'm not looking for a decision tonight, but we need to have this in our minds to think about how we want to approach this. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we have a it. I think we have to be prepared for it. And, uh, you know, we're talking 204 units at the Rockwell. I don't foresee another big apartment complex coming anytime soon, but 204 units out of that, a certain percentage of people are going to want to play at our transfer station for one reason or another. It's just bound to happen. The, odd, the odds are there. So um, I'd like each of us to think about that and think about potential scenarios, costs, charges, um, what access would be acceptable. Um, and by next meeting, uh, get some input from all three of us in terms of how we see that possibly shaking out. Uh, I don't think it's something we could, uh, we should ignore because it'll end up being an 11th hour issue and <laughs> with, uh, just a minute, Bob, it'll be an 11th hour issue and we're gonna need to instruct transfer station personnel appropriately on how to deal with these and how to behave. Bobby. Uh, no, I think you're right on par there and I think we got to discuss it, Paul. Uh, there's a lot to discuss there, uh, but uh, my issue is, um, you know, uh, the, uh, I could get into it, but we could talk about it later. Uh, you know, once you issue it, uh, people, are gonna people are gonna come, it's enforcement, I guess I wanna say, enforcement of the different stickers. 
-hmm. you know, if we do, if we do decide to go to a cheaper sticker, it's enforcement of those. And you know, a lot of people come and say, oh, I just got recycled, but I got this little bag to throw in. So it could be opening us up to another door, but I think it's real. I think you've got the idea of li uh, looking at the whole picture, looking at it. Um, I honestly think that it should be full price for everybody. And then once everything settles out with their, their trash companies and recycling, it may come to like, uh, you know, we may do some more. We might just make them, you know, pay. Uh, just first, like of all, first of all, I no way intonated that uh, it should be a less price sticker. Secondly, right. it would Correct. have to be, uh, and, and your point is one that should be on a list of points that you put together for the next meeting. Um, it's Thank a valid you. point. Enforcement, blah, 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 how we deal with all that. There's the mechanics of it. And um, that all needs to get um, talked about, walked through, shaken out, and, um, you know, discussed. And we, you know, we could go on and on with it right now, but I'd rather everybody yeah. be more prepared uh, for a more cognizant discussion couple of weeks from now. I totally agree, Paul. Sue, any comments? Didn't um, you, have, didn't you have the idea of a, um, we, we chatted briefly, I think earlier today about if we did, and this is just another thing to be on that list, just to counter Bobby's example or add to it, I should say, yeah. is that maybe recycling stickers are only issued through the Board of Health Office and not via the transfer station. That's one of the approaches that we can also take. So keep that yeah. in mind as a way to keep things separate and delineated and clear. Yep. Yeah, and I have a subset or an offshoot of that. I had spoke with someone today who's moving out of Berlin and wanted to know if he could buy a prorated sticker, you know, for two months, because he didn't pay a full price sticker. And then it's, you know, he's leaving at the end of August. And I didn't want to say, oh, we'll go ahead and dump because he's moving. You know, all the stuff people dump when they move. So I don't have a problem prorating it, but I don't know how you two feel about it. I, I don't either. However, we don't want to create numerous categories of proration. Um, you know, we have uh, a handicap uh, or, or um, hardship, I should say, uh, case or two where we're allowing uh, right. two payments over the course of a year. Uh, in a case like this, and when I hear somebody's moving, just a second, I'm almost done. Um, that usually indicates there's gonna be uh, a more than normal weekly generation of trash. And I think there should be a bare minimum uh, charge and maybe it's half a year, I don't know. Um, we wanna keep it as simple as possible. Not everybody's yeah. gonna like it, but we don't want 12 different categories because well, that becomes administratively a nightmare. The person that we offered the payment system to, uh, since she wasn't getting anywhere with the discount, just came and bought and paid full price for the sticker. <laughs> okay. Thank you. She said she wasn't. So well, she tried. Tried she went to the assessor's office. She was trying to figure out how to dis get a discount. Right. And when none of that works, we offered her, or I offered her, a payment right. system. Yeah. You know, made into, she went back the next week and just paid full price for the sticker. Well, that's, the good, that's the good news. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that's it simple. Good news. Thank you, so. So we don't have a lot of categories at the moment, but, you We know, don't I, want to create them either. Right. I listened to this gentleman, and 
I mean, I have no problem issuing a sticker and drawing a line through half of it and saying expires September 1st. Right. You know, so it's not good after that. Uh, and he just wanted to know how much of a fee he should pay. What? And if, if, we, if we do that, just a second, Bobby, if we do no that, we have to make sure we notify transfer station personnel so they can be on the lookout for that particular vehicle. Right. Yes. Okay, Bobby, yes. Uh, I was just wondering in that circumstance, uh, is he selling the house? Is it going to be a transfer, Sue? Yes. So maybe it could be split 50-50 with the uh, new owners. Uh, or something well, you that's kind of hard to do when it's a new that's a whole new thing but somebody's going to need a sticker and somebody wants to get rid of one so yeah, it might that, be worked out that's establishing one of those categories yeah, that i exactly. abhor and want to stay away from you're right you know, a, new re a new resident we we i had sent an email to you guys uh i read I, it yep i don't know if you got back to me bobby on that but it's like okay from july 1st to december 1st uh, any new resident just pays the normal sticker rate with no leak. Correct. Yeah, I agree. I, I didn't. I didn't get it. You know, if I if you. Oh, I agreed with that. What? I agreed with that all the way. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't get that. I didn't get that email. Okay, good. As long as you agreed with it, um, because that's the way to deal with that kind of thing. I think. Sure. Sure. Um. All right. Uh, anybody have anything else new and different before we were on the precipice of starting our uh, hearing? Uh, really? One, one other thing that I want to share is that um, relative to 104 Crosby Road, the Davises, their temporary occupancy, um, I tried to get in touch with them. The numbers I had were wrong. So I went to the house, spoke with Mr. Davis, um, told him that Bill and I had a conversation about um, how best to help rectify their situation. And it turns out the installer of this building system is from town and he's putting in two new systems on River Road. So Bill has drafted a letter, uh, which we'll be sending out in the next couple days, letting this gentleman know, this installer know, that unless we get some results relative to the Davises, his right to operate in Berlin will be suspended. And that's um, the best clout we could come up with. Um, and I would think make him start to pay attention because if he's got two systems going for a realtor and all of a sudden um, we're not going to uh, honor his license that creates a problem for him and the realtor um, and Bill relative to that one of the other questions I had I should have thought of this earlier is and I can wait to see the letter um, I'm wondering if he starts the system and hands it off to somebody else after getting this letter, where we might stand. Because his well, hands have been involved, so as far as I'm concerned, that system should be not, you know, not approved until his Davis situation is squared away. But if, that's something you can think about and get back to us on. Well, if, if, if another licensed installer is taking credit for the system, that would not hold the builder up. But again, the installer would be unable to perform any work in town. But if, if the original installer started the system and then handed it off, mm -hmm. you know, that creates kind of a gray area. The, the installer in question is um, he started to operate with his license. Mm -hmm. Now his license is suspended. Yep. I, I personally think, and I, you know, we'd have to check legalities, 
whether that can cascade to the new installer just because, I mean, if it's a brand new installer who starts from square one, that's a different story. There's no issue. But if uh, this particular installer started the system and then handed it off to someone else to finish, um, we got a, we got a, a a pimple there that we need to pay attention to. We, we, we do, but I think the issue at hand would be if, holding a builder up that has nothing to do with uh, the Davises. Right. Legally, I think that might be the question that's raised. Um, you know, he shouldn't be penalized because of the installer's uh, inability to, to uh, conform with that section of the code. But doesn't that give away all our leverage? Um, it would. I mean, but, but again, this letter is going out regardless if he had work to do in town or not, you know, that, that we just happen to know that he's on, on the, on the docket for those, uh, those new lots. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll see what the letter, hopefully the letter will uh, precipitate some positive action yeah, in this yeah. situation. Um, Cross yeah. that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. Bobby, so, yes. Quickly, uh, just quickly to follow up on Paul's, uh, he's a, uh, that builder is uh, that installer is liable for that last system, right, Billy? Well, he's responsible for its installation and, and indicating he installed it per code and per plan. Yes. Okay. Has he done that? No. Okay. So that's a reason to hold up his license on any further one. That's well, what. I, again, that's I, what we're doing. We're giving him thirty days to submit his as-built and certification, and if that doesn't happen. The board will be discussing a time frame or okay. on suspension of license. It could be indefinite until the as built's received. You could give him X time. I mean, that, that's something we'll discuss depending if he responds okay. to the letter. Right. It'll go certified. Again, the 30 days will begin uh, when the green card is signed. But the idea was Paul was saying he's already started a couple others. Is well, I don't, I don't know so, where he is. I'm just yes, saying, um, what if? Um, just time. trying to deal with eventualities. We can't right. deal with just what's right here and now. We have yep. to be thinking forward on, on all these situations because there's a ripple effect. And that's yep. the only reason I bring it up. All right, okay. it's 7.30 and it's time for our hearing. And uh, joining us is Elizabeth Dupree. Are you there? I have just yeah. promoted her. Hang on one second. Okay. Hi. My 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 electricity flicked off a couple of times, so hopefully I don't um, get bumped off. We can hear you, but we don't have video, Liz. Hello. There you are. Okay. Hi, so hopefully I don't get bumped off. We, I. I lost uh, um, electricity twice here, so thumbs up. I, I uh, fingers crossed I don't get bumped off. All right, so the floor is yours. So we are proposing um, new septic system designs and well installations at lot one and lot two Pollard Road, which is a new road off of West Street. Um, these lots Excuse me, excuse me just a minute, yes. uh, Liz. Uh, Leanne, is Lucy Roseberry in? Uh... She is. She's a participant and she did just have her hand up. Would you like me to promote her? She said she was. Um, yeah. just, uh, yes, please. All right. Bear with me a minute. We got an interested in the, uh, a butter. Okay, Lucy, you need to unmute your mic and start your video. Excuse me, just for a minute. There we go. Lucy's with you. Hi. Hi, Lucy. Paul, just so you know, we also have Louise Janda and Anil Fossil in attendance. Okay. All right. Um. Well, we'll go back to uh, Elizabeth Dupree. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, please start over and continue. 
Okay, Liz Dupree from Clearwater Environmental. Um, so my client, Neil Fossil, who is um, also on the call, um, we're proposing to in, uh, develop a couple of lots, um, put new septics and wells in, and um, that require numerous variances from the local board regulations. Um, this is weird kind of, because I don't have something to show you, you know, so um, I'm, should I just go down the list of, of, of uh... Yes, for the, for the record, I think that would be best. Yes, please. Okay. Can I just butt in real quick, Sue, did you get sure. the plans and the letters that those might be able to screen share perhaps? Yes. Um, I sent them all to you individually. Okay. Because I'm not really great on screen sharing. Okay. I've got my copy. Okay. So, typical, um, you know, these are typical four bedroom single family homes. Um, and they're, they're meeting Title V regulations, but they're not um, in full compliance with the local uh, regulations. So, Variances um, include um, the existing excavation of the primary septic system is 74 feet from a catch basin, required to be 150, 110 feet from an existing well, required to be 150, 15 feet from a property line, required to be 25 feet. Um, the edge of the excavation from the reserve area on lot one is 48 feet from a catch basin, 150 feet required, 170 feet from an existing well, 150 feet required, 16 feet from a property line, 25 feet um, required. And I, we did just identify and um, update lot one's plan, which is the PDF I sent today, and I'm guessing that's the one you sent to around to include the existing septic system at 171 West and, um, and a variance for that, which is 92 feet from the reserve area on lot one to the existing septic on 171 West. We are proposing also to install the well on lot one that's 129 feet from the dig out proposed on lot two in lieu of the 150 foot local regulation. That's lot one. Okay. Might as well do lot two. Okay. So on lot two, uh, again, we have a single family home proposing a uh, conventional septic system with well um, meeting Title V, but requiring some variances from local Board of Health regulations as follows. Uh, the proposed edge of the existing excavation of the primary septic is 74 feet from a catch basin, 150 required, 129 from, feet from a well, 150 required. Uh, the excavation of the reserve area on that lot is 46 feet from the catch basin. 150 required, 22 feet from the property line, 25 feet required. The uh, septic tank is 10 feet from the foundation in lieu of, I think it's 25 feet um, in town. So those are the variances required. And um, I presume you are aware, correct me if I'm wrong, that all these variances that you're requesting um, in the town of Berlin, we um, historically do not grant variances on new construction. Well, um, I know- Based on the current regulations, let me say that. Yeah, no, I, I know for Title V that variances aren't granted for new construction. So, well, title um, five is one thing and the Berlin Board of Health is another. The two that's separate right. Entities. So this was new to me. Okay. Uh, and I, so I found out, but, um, so, you know, we have these lots are 
you know, I came into this, these lots are already divided. The soil, soil right. testing was already done. Um, we are making the best of the situation at hand, um, given everything that's been approved. I mean, uh, these lots were approved, so. Um, it's the lots were approved. Um, the septics and the well layout and all that is not something that was previously approved, however. That's right. That's okay. right. So we're here today to trying to get the approval on these. The record. Yep. I understand that some of these uh, variances we're asking for are going to be revisited by the Board of Health because perhaps um, they're feeling that they are not needed. That is true. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is true. And, um, you know, from an engineering standpoint, I think that these designs, these layouts are uh, more than adequate. From my experience, 20 plus years in the uh, working with Title V, uh, nine of them at the DEP, I would say that the design of these systems is more than um, adequate and will work function without any. Um, adverse impact to the environment or to those areas that we need reductions. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, I believe we have at least one abutter who's participating and that would be Lucy Ayers. Lucy, do you have any questions? Can you hear me? It looks like we might have lost Lucy. Oh, okay. She's got her hand okay. up. No, that's Louise Janda. Do you want me to promote Louise? Uh, sure. Uh, okay. Okay, Louise, you need to unmute your mic and start your video. Okay, there's Louise. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just got bumped out. Um, okay. I, I have a question regarding the proximity of the well and lot one to my property. I understand it's about 30 feet from the edge of my property and it should be 50. And I wonder, um, you know, why that wasn't mentioned. Well, there are a couple more variances we should make clear are needed. Um, 4B, which is the out of season soil testing variance on both lots and uh, well rig 4.1 section one, which is again, uh, well less than 50 feet to a property line. On lot one. And two. One for the 4.1, right? Yep, that would be for lots one and two. Okay. Logged in here. What was the second one, Billy? Uh, well less than 50 feet to a property line. Paul Walter Vickford's in attendance and he's raising his hand. Okay. Um, Lucy, before we go to Walter, anything else at the moment uh, to add to your question? We can always come back to you. Um, well, I think I've gone over the questions with you and, and Bobby and, uh, and that's the quality of my water and the quantity. If this is the time to bring it up, I will. Otherwise I'll wait till a little later. All right, let's 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 move to Walter and then um, we'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm promoting Walter. Walter, you need to unmute and okay. start your video. How's this? Can you hear we me? We can hear you. We, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Hey. There you are. Okay. Hey, um, first of all, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I was, if you're still the chair, I don't know who's the chair right now, Paul, but I'm glad to hear you really point out that the Board of Health laws are far different from the zoning laws, and they've been very strict. Um, I was a little troubled to hear that you may want to change them. As you know, I basically wrote those in the mid-70s, and they've done the town very, very well over the years. Um, they've been weakened somewhat with this mounded systems they allow to be put in and everything else but those bylaws were drawn up with a consultation with engineers and uh 
well-respected engineers and people in the um, in the DEP at that time. And also, um, I would say, Conservation Law Foundation one time was going through the Board of Health laws, and they said, who wrote these? And of course, I know them all, but they're very good laws, and I really urge you to stick with them. This, this isn't a hardship case, as you well know, what's going in there. Uh, there's no hardship. You don't have, we don't have to um, give any kind of strongly urge you not to give any variances on any of those lots. I hear that they're looking for anywhere from half a million to three quarters of a million from them. No hardship there whatsoever. And um, I would urge you not to set a precedent by giving variances on it. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. You're always welcome. Thank you. The just to, just to clarify, um, the board is looking at a number of our regulations. There will be hearings held, uh, which the Conservation Commission will most certainly be first on our list to notify uh, for discussion. Nothing has changed um, currently. All the regs that have been in place for years are still in place. Um, and um, well, that, that's the update on that. Uh, relative to, uh, let's see, it was, I did not get the update relative to the locations on the Krakot property till late this afternoon, and I haven't had a chance to look at those. Um, and as Bill pointed out, we are missing a couple variance requests. Um, That being said, um, you know, we're still open for discussion. I believe Lucy may have uh, additional concerns or questions, and I would invite her to uh, come forth with those. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, I'm back here. I'm on Louise's thing. Um, I do have some questions that I raised and um, that I've mentioned before, and I emailed the Board of Health this afternoon. I don't know if you got a chance to see that or not, but I do have some concerns with the water, the water quality. I want to be assured that at, you know, if there was any changes in the quality of my water or the quantity of my water, that there will be some mitigating um, procedures for that. Um, and that, that's of, you know, obviously very important to me and um, I'm not sure how you go about doing this. I, I'd have to depend on the board for, to help, for help with that. And then the other question um, kind of directing to Neil was at a meeting, uh, I, I think it was last year when we spoke, um, I had mentioned to you that there is an open well, it's an abandoned um, hand dug open well that it borders the property. It would be right adjacent to plot one. And I would like to know what can be done at that time, Neil, I believe that you said that you would take care of that. Um, I think we shook on it and everything. So I'm just curious if that's still something that you are considering doing. Paul, do you want me to promote Neil as a panelist? Please, so he can answer the question and add uh, anything additional. Okay, just needs to unmute. You're muted, Neil. You need to unmute. There you go. Yes, I'm here. Hi, hey, Neil. How are you? Did you hear uh, Lucy Ayers' question, Neil? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And as far as that goes, I'll do, uh, I, I said I would do it and I would do it. Okay. Now, what I don't understand about the quality of her water, how my, if I do a well, how is it going to affect her well, Paul? Okay? Well, that's always unknown. Um, in, well, most cases, in most cases, 
threatening her water or you know what I mean? Yeah. The if, aquifer if, is her water bath. Aren't they not? If I might finish what I was saying, yeah, in most ahead. cases there is virtually no impact. But as a butter, she has a right to be concerned. So it's it's a topic on the table, is what it is. No, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Okay, that's all. That's all yeah. we're saying right now. Right. Um, could I ask where this well is located? Is this the well on the Crackheart property, or Lucy, is this on your property, the shallow well? It's no, it's on my property. Because that's something that we should know the location of and have shown on the locust plan also. Right. Um, I'd be more than happy to show anyone where it is. Have you seen it, Neil? Is Lucy speaking? No, I it is. I'm on Lucy's thing. No. And the, Lucy, you're um, okay. You're on the heirs' property. All right. Okay. Um, Lucy, did you uh, did you hear Neil? Yes, I did. Once. Okay. And you said, just to, so that I can restate it to make sure, because it seemed like there was a glip, maybe it was just on my end, that um, you'd be happy to show anybody where that shallow well location is, which, is, right. also, which is also something we should probably be aware of on mm -hmm. the plans, uh, because that's part and parcel of what's being proposed here. Um, does the uh, well service anything right now, or is it? It's just, abandoned. It's an abandoned well. Mm -hmm. I need, I need you know how to... deep it is? Uh, it's not very deep at all. It's probably about 20 to 30 feet. The locations, uh, Liz, for your proposed septic systems, they are a result of who's testing. Is that testing that uh, you and Neil did? Was that something prior? I believe Ross was involved. So Ross had done some testing. Uh, we went back out and did additional testing so that we could get, so we could actually make the plan more compliant. Um, you know, that's so there are, there was additional testing on lot one so that we could um, better compliance. Was, what was the, or what is the um, driving reason or force that prohibits your plans from meeting current regulations? Uh, well, you know, just we can't meet all the um, distances. I look at this, look at the configurations of these lots, you know, um, in relation to everything around them, we just can't fit it all in without needing some, uh, some reduction to distances. I've tried every configuration I can on these lots to make them as away from especially the more critical areas. Uh, do either of the other board members have any comments at this point? I have an issue with granting so many variances for a new property. Um, I just don't want to open us up to legal issues down the road. It's, was this property actually meant to be one house lot and then was subdivided into two? No, no, Susan. There's actually five lots proposed, Sue. It doesn't matter. Five lots proposed. Oh, wow. At one point, at one point, they were looking at somebody was looking at six, I believe, but it's five on the right. books. Yes, Lucy. 
I just have a question regarding the original plot plans that were that were uh, approved. I, I would presume that they were approved and why they have to be changed. Are these the first plot plans that we've seen? Or that the Board of Health has seen? Yes. So we so we see the septic the lines. We're, we're not involved. Hold on, let Bill speak, please. We're not involved in the lot approval, so we're just seeing these now as septic designs. So the the lots have been approved already um, by planning board, but again, that doesn't have a bearing on our review of the septic system. And typically, just so for general information, the planning board doesn't necessarily huddle with the board of health when they're laying out lot design, plot design, to take into consideration the needs of meeting the various requirements. So um, I, I guess on a municipal level, you would call that a disconnect. Um, I guess so. There, there have certainly been conversations about zoning, planning, Board of Health, CONCOM, having joint meetings and um, I'll, I'll just say that that has not happened. Uh, and I, I can't tell you why, it just has not happened. Um, obviously a situation like this, it would have been beneficial to all parties had that occurred. Um, I believe Bill, want, Bill Brookings would like to weigh in. Oh yes, sorry. Just yeah, so. I guess it's important to note that each, each board I think looks at their own jurisdiction and their own regulations and, and performs their duties underneath that umbrella. So, you know, planning board moves forward and, and, and approves five lots. It doesn't necessarily mean that those five lots will have septic designs or well locations that meet board of health regulations. It's just the way the process goes and it seems, um, you know, lot approval is the first step because without that, you don't have the ability to cite your well and septic. Um, but it's certainly wise to look at that uh, early on for that reason. Can I ask uh, which of the um, which of the local regulations you are looking at re um, reducing? What are the ones you are proposing to reduce? Um, well, Paul, would you like me to um, kind of boil down what we looked at today? Yeah, that yeah. would be that would be helpful. You'd probably be more succinct than I would right now, Bill. Um, Paul and I looked today at the plans presented and the list of variances needed, and we came up with um, you know which variances would go away with the revisions that are proposed, and 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 there are a couple of variances that would still be needed even uh, once those uh, local regulations are revised. Um, why don't we go to lot two, it was a little simpler. Um, when Paul and I looked at uh, lot two's list, um, the only uh, variances that would be needed um, would be the well offset to property line. So the actual septic um, variances that are being proposed uh, would not be needed under uh, under the revised regulations. So lot, lot two, pretty straightforward. If the board moves forward uh, with their proposed uh, regulation revisions, the only variances needed there, or I should say variance, would be the well to property line. And um, on lot two, that lot line offset is to a lot line within the project. Mm -hmm. um, on lot, uh, lot one, um, the only variances that would be needed there again would be well less than 50 feet to property line. Again, this would be to an abutters property line. And also you would still need the um, offset to property line uh, to edge of stone. Primary would be um, 20 feet and reserve would be 21 feet. And currently the proposed regulations still hold that 25 foot offset. So, you know, a number of these variances would not be required. Bill, I'm guessing if uh, if we had the new framework, um, I could potentially make modifications to the plan to make them meet, you know, have no variances, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, depending if you know if I knew exactly what the re what the changes were, I could. Um, yeah, those draft regulations are actually available. I don't know that they've been made available to the public yet. The board was 
waiting to hold an actual hearing when we actually begin to meet in person and we don't know when that's going to occur. Um, you know, it's up to the board if they want to, you know, release that draft before that happens. Yeah, but I understand those regs until we have a public hearing and then we vote them in <clears throat> are not effective. Both Lucy and Walter have their hand raised. All right, Lucy first. Um, I just have a question um, on the variance for the 30 feet, you know, the difference the well, of 30, 50 yeah. feet on for the well. What effect will that have on my property in the future? Will that affect, let's say I wanted to build a house up there. What would that, what would, what would happen with that? Would I have a problem with, you know, the placement of my septic system? I mean, there, there must be a reason for 50 foot, um, you know, 50 feet between a uh, well and uh, bordering properties. Paul, do you want me to weigh in? Please, Bill. Um, what this variance would mean is if the well is 30 feet to the property line, there'd be an additional 20 foot taking on your property. But currently the board requires 25 feet to the edge of a septic system to a property line. So you proposing a system on your side of the property wouldn't necessarily be impacted by that well offset reduction. I don't understand what you mean by the taking of 20 feet. What does that well, mean? Well, you know, if the, if the well was 50 feet to your property line, it would meet the regulation and there wouldn't right. be a variance needed. Because it's asked to be 30 feet, that means that 50 foot radius, if you will, is Everything after the 50 foot radius. Um, yep, so basically, you know. Um, Because the well is being proposed 50 feet to your lot line, so in theory that 50 foot radius that would have been required is, is, is crossing your line. So there's a, a 20 foot um, piece of that radius that goes onto your lot. But again, the board currently requires 25 feet to a septic system. So if you were proposing a septic system on your lot, that, that 20 feet, if you will, crossing the line wouldn't affect you because your system would be, um, number one, it would have to be 100 feet from that well. But again, you, you couldn't be closer to that property line. So, um, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't really impact the uh, placement of a septic on your lot. To, to say it another way, Lucy, it's not a uh, ownership taking, it's relative to regulations. You would still be allowed to put in a, a septic system according to code, um, 25 feet from the property line. Uh, it would just be that the 50 feet uh, well radius, ex their well radius extends onto your property, but would have no, um, no impact on any plans you have. Yeah. Or might have. Hmm. So why would, but why would I want, why would you want to change that? Why would you allow 30 feet instead of the 50 feet? Just curious. There must be other places besides that one spot. You know what? I'm, I'm looking at it now. It, okay. it, that's an issue. I can move that well so it's, we meet the 50 feet to your property line. I think, uh, Liz, if you would look at those sorts of things, it would be beneficial to um, any kind of forward movement here. Um, did Walter, Walter, you have your hand up, I believe. Yeah, why don't we try promoting him? Okay. Is that where the noise is coming from? Yeah, that, he's on here twice, so yeah. maybe oh. this will work better. Walter, we can't hear you. Turn your volume. Or Leanne. Walter, you need to unmute your mic. Finding me. There we go, Walter. You're all set. All right. I'm. I'm sorry. Um, you know, uh, again, uh, in answer to changing the regs. As you know, you have a long ways to go and you've got to run it by the Conservation Commission. You have Absolutely. a public hearing, yep. um, you know, the whole thing. It's going to be months before that's changed in any way for, for, a var for a variance to go through or some change. But in the meantime, again, uh, you know, I would stick with your, 
Board of Health regs that he'd done so well implementing over the past, it was 45 years old now, uh, just was figuring it out. And um, please stick with those. Never mind talking about somebody else's, I mean, variances to side lot lines or any of that stuff. Just stick with the regs. They've got enough land there to make enormous profits and put in all the houses they want without changing these regs. And I say, stick with it. That's what we've done. That's why Berlin is Berlin, as a matter of fact. So please, please uh, hang in there on that. Um, I'm prepared to, uh, anybody else want to weigh in at the moment? Bobby. I think we should continue this. Okay. Um, I got a couple things that that's a motion that I am going to make. Um, but I, I would like to offer a little preamble to that. For me personally, the parts that I, I wrestle with uh, right now, no fault, but um, there are a couple of missing variance requests. Um, I didn't get a copy of plans till late this afternoon. Uh, this is a unique situation where some of these regs may change, and I underscore may, um, which would make some of these variance requests go away. Um, and it, it, the other part that bothers me in, in one aspect is none of my business, but um, to go into a development like this, just assuming, um, well, we'll do the best we can, uh, and I could be wrong in saying that, and I apologize if I am, but, uh, you know, in this day and age, we have to, we all have to be aware of rules and regulations, and that's certainly underscored by the, the whole virus thing, and it certainly applies in this, this situation when it comes to septics and wells. Um, it's not... Uh, it's not an easy, oh, we can just do this, we can do that. Um, sometimes there's a lot of hard work in, uh, involved and sometimes money has to be spent. And I don't know if that's, if either of those apply to this, but it's, it's, it's part of what I'm looking at that um, I am just frankly undecided on, on, on how I actually feel. And with that being said, I make a motion that we continue this hearing because I think it requires and deserves a little further insight uh, investigation and uh, maybe some tweaking of plans where, where possible to make things more, uh, more palatable. Um, I, this is not something that um, I can move forward with certainly tonight. Do I hear a second? second. All in favor? Bobby? Aye. In favor. Sue? Aye. Myself? Aye. aye. In favor? With, yep. With that being said, this, this hearing is um, continued um, for further uh, insight, investigation, and conversation. Uh, we're going to give that a date and time, Paul. Um, yes, we will. Uh, so if we make some modifications to the plan, what kind of timeline do you need before the hearing to adequately look at them? Certainly a week to 10 days would be nice. Uh, excuse me. I take two meetings out, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm responding to Liz's question first. I I'm sorry. Uh, we have 30 days, so um, we'd be looking at the fourth. I guess Tuesday, September 1st, 
would be when we would continue. Does that uh, jive, Bill, with your calendar? Yeah, well, it's the first uh, Tuesday of September, and um, with anything uh, not scheduled currently, we'd go at 7.30. Okay. And as uh, Liz and Neil, as Bill is our agent, he should probably continue to be your main contact on this. Um, he keeps the board well advised of uh, what transpires. Um, and we go from there. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm gonna hang on. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Neil. Yeah. Uh, I don't hear what I'm saying. All right. Thank you. Leanne, who is on board? Yes. Who is on board? Who's on board currently? Um, Liz and Lucy are still in attendance. Okay. Um, now just Lucy is in attendance. I don't know if there's anything further to be said tonight other than that we all need to... Uh, chew on this and if you're able come up with your own little list of ideas suggestions on how to proceed or what we want to see moving forward and uh, we'll probably certainly be discussing this uh, prior to the September 1st meeting and I imagine uh, Liz will be in touch with you Bill yes And again, if any of the board members want to take a look at the plans, um, we can, or we can wait for the revised information to be submitted. You know, I think, Paul, I think our meeting today was pretty productive to kind of go over what, you know, what may change if the regs are revised to kind of put it in perspective. Right, right. Go ahead, Bobby. No, just uh, along with everybody else here, uh, we haven't changed the regs yet. Uh, nope. We've been talking about them. We've got them in, uh, like you say, uh, we had them all ready to go here. Sue's worked on them for a couple of years. Uh, we've all worked on them. I think we have to start thinking about doing, you know, their basic, you know, low level regs. But yet we got to start thinking about doing those. But we can't have people planning on, and I don't know how they know that we're pl planning on, um, regs that haven't been cha changed yet. That's all. Um, well, that's, I didn't want to come right out and say it, but that's one of the things that bothers me is right. that somebody would come in and buy this parcel of land based on uh, a plot plan layout and just assume, figure that it will right. work. And yeah. I think that happened even before realizing and understanding regs. Uh, right. I don't know. I, I could be way off base with that, but uh, that's one of the things that I'm wrestling with. I, I um, Just from a strictly business perspective, I don't know. I might be just different there. No, not much. Bill, any... Closing comments, words of wisdom, um, <laughs> please for help. <laughs> uh, no, um, again, uh, you know, I think that project, um, sometimes lots look big on paper, but when you start applying the regulations, um, they get small in a hurry. So that might be the situation here. Again, different engineer did the lot layout, did the soil testing, uh, the crack heart uh -huh. septic and well, I don't think was even thought of at the time, whether it was block by brush or you know normally within a budding house you, you would look at that but uh whatever got us to this point i, I can't say but 
um, you know, things are tight. No, no, you know, obviously not, not the board's issue per se, but um, yeah, space is certainly an issue. Yeah, so technically the planning board is in a position to make the board of health the bad guys more often than not. Well, because <laughs> the, uh, because I think I mean, if, you cut, if you cut to the chase, because there's no communication. Here you go. But I think it's the process. I, I think people, you know, get so focused on getting their subdivision approved that right. you know, the board of health is kind of like, okay, now now let's get our permits. And oh yeah, we're yeah. we're we're kind of eleventh hour, you know. Yep. They they're looking at the how many lots, how much they can sell the houses for, what it costs them to develop the property, what it costs them to build the houses, and what they can walk away with. And then, oh yeah, we need septic and well. Right. Bobby. Uh, the only other thing was, uh, you know, like uh, the, the well on, you know, I guess they had a, a gentleman's agreement on that they, the old uh, spring well up on the hill with Neil, which is a great thing for landowners and, uh, you know, abutters to get together on, but yet, uh, you know, they, they haven't come together on, you know, what, what they're going to do there. I mean, I think there's, what, what are the, and, and they brought up a well on uh, within 30 feet. Was that Ayers well or was that? No, that's right? the proposed the proposed well on, on the new lot one. Yeah, this is that Ayers or no. Krakow property, Billy? Ayers. It oh, okay. It, it sorry. right impinges on Ayers property. Okay. And what were you talking about some spring well? As I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, it would be the one that Lucy spoke of that that neil agreed to destroy or oh the, uh, the, hand, the hand dug well on yes, it, oh, oh okay ancient ancient well yeah ancient uh or not even a well might be just a runoff ball uh well she says, she says it's 20 or 30 feet deep so that's a somebody dug a well yeah i guess yeah yeah and it wasn't a naturally occurring hole no and I didn't see that on the plan but maybe Billy did uh, no, or no, yeah, no yeah, it's not it it's not on the plan no. Yeah, so and that was one of the points to, that was made tonight. That that needs yeah. to be clarified. Yes. All right. Anything new or additional for the board of health? We'll start with you, Bill, so you can cut. Uh, nothing on that project, but we do have um, three Title Five inspection reports. Uh, two very straightforward. One we'll uh, draft a letter for. Um, the two on River Road, 167 and 164, both pass, no issues there. Um, 312 South Street, uh, the board looked at a report uh, back in 2011 and questioned groundwater depth versus bottom of system depth, wrote a letter, got a response from an inspector and accepted the report. This was a, a, a probably at that time, a, a board made up of uh, different members. Um, so we're seeing this uh, a new report uh, come in, and the um, the inspector did not um, call out the uh, groundwater that we had seen in some soil testing on the lot. So I spoke to him today, um, got him the information, and, and he's going to take a look at it. The okay. board we'll probably issue a letter uh, similar to what we did in 2011. Asking oh. for. Okay, sorry. Asking for documentation or more verification on where that groundwater table is in relation to the bottom of the system. Okay. Just a hunch, but Bobby, I suspect um, you'll probably be having a conversation with Neil at some point, so just proceed cautiously. I don't talk, I've never talked to him ever. Well, the way you interacted, it seemed like you guys know each other, and I wouldn't be I, surprised, I wouldn't be surprised if he contacted you. That's all oh, I'm saying. Maybe. No, so I've never, I've never, I've never talked to him. I don't even know them, uh, Paul. Uh, mm, okay. Don't know any of them, uh, truthfully. Uh, I was just trying to. Lucy, Lucy brought me around to the fact of uh, that they had a gentleman's agreement, Paul. Well, Lucy uh, Ayers. Yeah, no, I, that's uh, that's not what I'm talking about. But okay. Oh yeah, no, I have no interaction with them at all. Uh, ever. All right. all right, I'm just saying. Uh, fine. If, if, he if you want, if he, if he doesn't talk to you, that's not an yeah. issue. <laughs> if you want me to, I will. We can try to make you know. All we can do is go up there as a team and try to tell them how things go here. Uh, no, I've never had no, any inter no. any I, interaction. I, I right now, that I don't think that would be appropriate. They need yeah. to. Uh, yeah. 
they need to do some internal uh, thinking and planning. Yep, yep. So Never had not, any not interaction. Up to us, not Never. up to us to solve everybody's problems. No, me either. Uh, I've okay. never had any interaction ever with them, Paul. Okay, good enough said. Anything else, Bill? That is all I have this evening. All right, I have nothing else. Sue? Uh, just uh, basic issues, Sue? Paul. Uh, anything else? Sue? No. Just What's that? for the future, I'm thinking I've been watching the world in the office. Um, and I think we're going to need to discuss before the next budget term uh, increasing office support staff time-wise. Four hours is not cutting it. No, no. Okay. I mean, it's just too complicated. I'm I'm spending between phone calls and emails and everything else probably three or four hours a day working from my house. Right. And Paul, I know you've been putting in the time. Donna's been putting in, you know, all the time that she would normally spend selling stickers at the transfer station. I've been letting her work on Saturdays and she's just trying to catch up. By the time she gets the e emails, prints out the NRP reports, she hasn't even started on the uh, tracking spreadsheets for the editors. I mean, it's, we almost have to double her time if she yes. has it available right. yep. or more. And so I want you guys to uh, consider that because we're going to get in over our heads shortly. Would That's be my concern. Bobby. Yeah. Would some of this be covered under the COVID thing, like all the additional baloney we got to put up with besides the transfer and that? Can we uh, get? Uh, I, you know, I don't think Don is really dealing with much to do okay. with that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, right. I just think the administrative workload of Board of Health is, is growing. It is. Yes. Speaking of which, Sue, I have another resident that wants a transfer station sticker, but he will not buy it at the transfer station. <laughs> well, I'm sure we could make arrangements for that person to purchase it on Friday. If not, I will give him my phone number and I will meet him down there and sell him one. Some, well, no, I want to get out of here tomorrow night. See? So. Well, I'll if What's you want to get out of here tomorrow night, why are you saying Friday? Because Donna? Because Donna will be in the office on Friday morning. And she, oh. would, she would go and meet somebody at the door and let them in? Yes. Okay. If just I have her nicely. All right. <laughs> we, may ha we may have to. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I, I got to say, lately the majority of voicemails have been transfer station related in the last couple. Oh of weeks. yeah, yeah. Does that I happen, know, I mean, does that happen much in your other towns, Bill? Well, no, because I have administrative assistants in other towns, so I, I don't, I don't get the. Oh, okay. They they weed through them and get me what I need. <laughs> wow. We should be so fortunate here. Yes. Yes. All right, everybody. I want to ask the what? police chief for another computer too. There are days when Bill's trying to work on it, I need to work on it, and we have to share. Yep. <laughs> That's a good point. I think we should put in that request. Didn't there used to be two, Billy? I no. don't remember. I don't think so. That back desk is usually there for space, um, looking okay. at plans, but I think phone and computer have always been at that one desk. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking about the continuing printing of those NRP reports and, and how important that is or yeah. isn't. Probably want to save I, me. I noticed the pile and it's like, wow. Probably want to save me electronically because they're, uh, yeah. if you're getting 30, 40 pages a day, five days a week, that's a lot of paper and ink. Yeah, it, it's, it, it doesn't make sense to continue that. I agree. Unless. And I unless, don't know where to put them. Right. And that's where I'm yep. going. I want to stop doing that. However, 
we probably should look at them, and the only ones we print out is if there is an issue. Yep. Most of yep. them are have no issues. Those we can save electronically. Okay. And, and maybe maybe we get rid of the pile we have. Uh, I'll, I'll think about that, and I'm going to go through a few of the older ones relative to some uh, time-sensitive areas when there were issues going on down there. We'll make a decision. And even if they're electronically fall, we can pull them back up if we have to, correct? That's the point, yep. yep. So we don't need to be, like you say, wasting paper uh, in general. All right, everybody. I think that's a night. Uh, didn't we have a few other things, Paul? Can, you roll call? can I confirm your next meeting as being August 18th at 7 p.m.? You certainly can. Okay, I'll get that booked for you um, this week. Thank you, Thank you, Leanne. Okay, well, we, need, we need a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting until August 18th, 2020. I'll second that. All in favor? I'll say aye. 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 Sue, aye. Bobby? Aye. Yep, aye. Okay, it's unanimous.